sort of general sense of how meditate. Ah, so we're just starting to uh, record the session. So I'll, I'll, I'll say it again that this is um, something you can do uh, collectively as we're doing on this uh, first Monday of uh, every month in the Hour Alleviate sessions where, where uh, some of those of you gathering are offering to actually generate this healing energy through your meditation and have that sense of transmitting it, transferring it to those who uh, are uh, receiving it. And I know for myself, I often hear of people who aren't well. Uh, sometimes that's, you know, within family or friends or uh, somebody that you know uh, a little more casually. But often uh, it's nice to say something like, I'll think of you or I'll pray for you or I'll meditate for you. And you can do that in that sort of general sense of just a, a sort of a good wish. Uh, but actually, if you wanted to do something more um, specific and actually something with uh, potentially quite a deal more impact, then this is the sort of actual practice that you can do and you could actually direct it to somebody that you care for. So I just wanted to talk about healing and uh, meditation in a broader sense uh, first before we actually introduce uh, the exercise, the actual technique. And as, as I'm sure everybody's aware these days, um, there's been uh, a lot of claims made about meditation being good for healing. Uh, and I must uh, admit when I first started doing this work, which was back in the early 80s, uh, that was sort of more just through people's experience, you know, from Meditation has been around for thousands of years and people have felt that it was good for healing of all sorts of things over that, that uh, period of time. Uh, and in those early 80s, there was very little formal research. And being as it is that most of us are living in the Western world, uh, we live in a fairly uh, scientific sort of environment uh, and particularly amongst the medical profession and the scientific community, uh, they really like uh, research. Uh, and the good news is that in, uh, well, here we are 40 years later, uh, I started running cancer groups in 81, and uh, here we are in 2021. And in that intervening uh, 40 years, there's been literally thousands of studies um, done uh, looking at the impact that meditation has on just about anything that you can think of that uh, might require healing. And in most situations, there's been quite positive indications. Now, having said that, um, it's, it's, it's really quite possible to say that there's a good uh, medical evidence base or scientific evidence base for meditation in many um, situations that require healing. And on our um, Alleviate uh, website, I've gathered together um, quite a few of the key research articles um, for all the major different chronic degenerative diseases. So there's, there's um, articles there on cancer and meditation, type 2 diabetes and meditation, um, heart disease meditation, but also some of the sort of uh, difficult symptoms. So um, things like uh, pain management, sleep difficulties, uh, emotional mental health, you know, all, all these things have got pretty good evidence bases now where you can say that meditation is actually therapeutic. Um, there, there is something more to say about that though, that actually that, that type of research, I, I would say if we're being really, um, uh, accurate and, and sensibly critical, uh, we could still say it's probably still in really reasonably early stages in that a lot of the research that's been done um, could have been tighter. Uh, and what we're seeing now is that there's, there's much more um, better design studies going on. 
uh, and, and places like the centres that I've helped set up at um, uh, the Centres for Contemplative Studies at both Monash and Melbourne University, they're doing much more critical um, studies, uh, as are quite a lot of leading institutions around the world. So I think we're going to see another level of um, confidence coming through from the scientific community in the medical world that this stuff really does work. Uh, and my guess is if you if you tuned in tonight, um, you're probably quite confident that it does work uh, or you're at least uh, pretty optimistic. <laughs> uh, you'd have to be a bit odd to turn up if you didn't think it was much good. Uh, and um, some of you will have had direct experience. And, you know, I'm certainly somebody who's had that direct experience that I, I, I feel it's highly unlikely I'd, I'd be here today uh, fit and well if it hadn't been for a regular practice of meditation. And certainly when I had my own um, cancer problems back in the 70s, uh, without meditation as a mainstay, I, I really don't think I would have survived. Um, so many of you have had that experience and you know that in a personal sense it works. Uh, but what we're talking about tonight is what, how, does, how does a group meditating together help with healing? And uh, because it's December, I can't help linking this to Christmas. And when Christmas comes around, I know for some people it's um, a difficult time. Some people have had uh, difficult relationships with Christianity. Uh, but I, I would suggest to you, if you actually uh, take a moment to consider the um, metaphysical or the metaphorical meaning of Christ's birth and Christ's life, then what he symbolised and metaphysically represents is unconditional love. So at Christmas to me is always about the birth of unconditional love and, and the actual coming into life of unconditional love. And to me, that's what makes it such a, a special time because it's actually marking that. And I think it's easy for all of us to realise that uh, the more unconditional love there would be in the world, the better the world, better place the world will be. Um, but also with um, uh, Christ's stories, many of them revolve around healing. And I don't, I don't think it's any coincidence that he was regarded as a great healer. Because I, I think, again, many of us would appreciate that love is a great healer. So somebody who represents unconditional love, purely and wholly, uh, you would imagine would be an extraordinary healer. And there are many stories um, around Christ's uh, life where people were healed just by being in his presence or by touching him. Now, if you think about what does that represent, it's like touching unconditional love. It's actually being in the presence of unconditional love. And so if we, if we put that together with what happens when people go into a really deep meditative state, so if we go beyond relaxation, we go beyond concentration, we go beyond mindfulness, we go beyond imagery or contemplation and go into that stillness of of, of really uh, deep and uh, profound meditation, then, then that, that takes us from our normal dualistic experience of life um, into a unified state, into a oneness, and into a state of absolute. So as, as we're sitting here this evening or the day, because I know we've got people uh, in other time zones uh, to the one I'm in, which is on the east coast of Australia, um, if, if, um, <laughs> I just managed to lose my thread. What was I talking about, Murray? Well, unconditional love. 
um, and it, when you when you enter that sense of deep stillness, oh yeah, touching that. Yeah, why was I talking about the time? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> if you don't know either, then I feel better about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, if we, if we can go into this state of, um, I was talking about going from a, I know what it was, I was talking about going from a dualistic state to a non-dualistic one. And I was saying about if, if, if you're actually um, where, wherever you are now, whatever time of day it is, uh, and you're looking at this uh, little screen in front of you, this little computer, or if you're doing it on a phone, however you're doing it, an iPad. Um, the, the, the common experience is there's you and there's the computer, isn't it? I mean, maybe you're looking at my face and it's taking up a fair bit of the screen that you're looking at. Um, but it, there's a sense of yourself and the other thing with either me being the other thing or the computer being the other thing, or if you look out the window, we've got a beautiful um, sunset happening here at the moment. That, 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 there's sort of the sense of me and everything else. That, that makes sense? That's what we mean by dualistic. There's two, two things. There's me and the other. Okay. So when, when you go into deep meditation, that sense of me and other, is transcended and 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 there's a sense of oneness you know and oneness means one thing not two things that's what oneness means when you say there's oneness it's a non-dualistic oneness and in in that state you get the absolutes you get sort of these these absolutes so you you actually encounter one of the great absolutes, which is unconditional love. That's actually part of that territory. It's, it's, that's the domain you enter into. You enter into the experience of that. So when you go into deep meditation, that's, that's what's there to greet you, as it were. Now, the interesting thing is that to go into that non-dualistic state becomes quite attractive. And you would think, well, uh, how do I how do I get there? What do I have to do? And that's where it gets a little paradoxical because actually, what you really need to do is to not do anything. It's actually more about letting go and letting go of that dualistic sort of sense we have, and, and actually just almost like dropping back into or returning to that state of oneness. So to actually accomplish that is a little tricky because we're so used to thinking and we're so used to having emotions. And when we're thinking, we're thinking about me and something else. And emotions usually relate to yourself and something else. I, I went to the um, my football team, Melbourne, had its celebration of its premiership yesterday. <laughs> so there was that was me and something else. I had to get it in somewhere, folks. Yeah. <laughs> right. So sometimes it's sort of like you have this sense of I'm at an event, you know, or I'm doing something. And clearly, to go into this non-dual state, you, you actually go into a state of deep stillness. And so one of the other qualities of this deep meditative state is, is its stillness. So what that means is that to actually enter into it, you, you, you actually can't be doing something because if you're doing something, then you're not actually still. And it's in the stillness that you find this unconditional love and you find this actual profound healing. So it's not to say that you can't get a lot of benefit for healing from relaxation. And you can certainly get a lot of benefit for healing from being more mindful and from doing imagery and contemplation. 
but there's something else again on offer that's actually more profound, if you like, or more, more um, all-encompassing when you go into this deep stillness of meditation. Is that making some sense? And so when, 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 when the, the sort of the tricky bit is that relaxation is beneficial, but it's not meditation. Relaxation helps with healing. It's very beneficial. It's very worthwhile doing, but it's not actually meditating. If you're sitting there, putting all your energies into relaxing, you're actually doing something and you're doing something that's really useful, but it's not meditation. So it's the same with mindfulness. It's really useful. It's a great thing to practice. It's got lots of use, uh, just like relaxation, uh, but it's, it's not the same as meditation. And guided imagery is the same thing. Contemplation is the same thing. They're, they're all really useful. They can all be really helpful with healing, but they're not the same as meditation. So what we're, what we're actually, I'm talking about this evening is actually this sort of um, more profound healing potential that comes out of meditation. And if we understand it, um, then we understand that to actually enter into it, it's more about not doing. And what helps us to get to a point where we can let go of thinking we have to do something or just innately doing something because that's what we're so used to doing. You know, so basically, you know, how can we switch our uh, body off so that it's just deeply relaxed? How can we switch our mind off so it's not actually actively thinking? How can we allow our emotions to settle? And we, you know, we've, we talk about this fairly regularly and there's books written on it. Um, what I want to say uh, tonight is that one of the most direct ways to actually enter into this stillness and into the experience of the depth of meditation is, is through the environment, through the actual environment that's created around about you and that you can actually join into. So traditionally, the person who was basically in charge of creating that environment was the meditation teacher. And it was their job to create the atmosphere, if you like, um, and through their own practice and through their own experience, their own realization to create um, by example uh, and in a way that was tangibly experiential, uh, this state of stillness that, that is deeper meditation. And also traditionally in all the great um, religious traditions and all the great meditation traditions, the community of practitioners, the people who actually meditate together, are, are, have also been regarded as having this potential and obviously that would make obvious sense. You know, like I, I went to um, uh, a, a football replay yesterday and it, it, it's not the sort of environment you would obviously think of as being meditative. That's a little joke, <laughs> but it's a fact. <laughs> and, you know, you go to something like that and you get swept up in the environment. And, you know, there have been plenty of uh, protests in recent uh, weeks uh, about the vaccine manda mandates and, you know, anti-vaxxers and all that stuff. And I'm sure if you went to one of those rallies, you would find the atmosphere uh, quite contagious and, and quite different to what we're talking about. Um, I'm sure we've all been into particular buildings where the presence of the building, the actual environment of the building has really struck us as being deeply peaceful um, and, and 
even if we're not sort of all that religiously inclined, has given us that sense, this, given us that sense that this is a sacred place. You know, you all have that experience. I know I've certainly been into buildings and you go into other buildings and they just feel creepy. You know, there's a whole different atmosphere there. So we're, 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 we're talking about something that's um, not so easy to measure on a Geiger counter or <laughs> some sort of uh, scientific instrument. But as but this human instrument that we are is very sensitive to this stuff and really picks it up. Uh, and so um, what I would suggest to you is that this is actually what, what's, what's possible with something like we're aiming to do collectively with these healing sessions. And, it, and it's extraordinary, really, that we can do this uh, courtesy of computers and um, uh, we're with everybody in different places. But I, I think this is part of what um, the human mind uh, is capable of. And, and, and it just shows how extraordinary the human mind is. Um, and it shows that as individuals, we can be helpful in ways perhaps we mightn't have imagined um, some years back. Um, and it also um, shows that we can be helped in ways that we mightn't have um, thought of it, thought of. So in, in a, um, a healing session like this, for those of you who are offering to be giving the, the, this healing uh, energy, there, there's actually two elements to it. Um, and in a way, they're, they're contradictory. But if, if we do them um, effectively, then one actually leads to the other. So what, what we aim to do in, 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 in a session like this is when we're, and, and this is what you can do for somebody else that you might uh, feel needs help, you know, it needs healing or it's low in energy or it's going through a difficult time. Um, you, you can use guided imagery to draw on the energy that is unconditional love and actually direct it to that other person in a very active and, um, uh, and I believe quite potent way. I, I, I've, I've heard of plenty of people who've been recipients for the, uh, during these sort of practices that have really felt uh, powerfully benefited by them. Um, so that's that that's the first stage of the exercise where we actually draw on um, unconditional love and and actually direct it uh, to people who are in need which might be an individual we know or might be like collectively as we we can do um, uh, this evening uh, and sometimes it's helpful to um, have a photo uh, of the person that you're you're directing this energy to or know their name and that's why we we offer with these sessions. If you want to have your name shared, if you if you want to be a recipient of the healing, uh, it, it can be nice, and we'll we'll display them in a, in a few minutes. Uh, so that that first stage of the exercise is where we generate um, this healing energy, and and we have this intention of transmitting it either to an individual or to a, to a group or or to the, you know, just to the wider world more uh, generically. But then the, because we're actually, uh, well, uh, and then, and then that, that leads on into the second phase of this healing um, exercise, where actually once we've done the guided imagery, then we aim to let go of the imagery and just create this deep meditative space. And actually, one of the um, delights <laughs> that cuts through the paradox is that by actually using this uh, guided imagery based on divine love, it actually takes you into that deep meditative stillness. It's a very good access point, actually, 
and and this this same technique that I'll I'll, um, I'll lead us all through in a few moments um, is actually being used specifically uh, uh, on the on the spiritual path as it has been used in a healing context uh, because it can accomplish both things. Uh, so if if you're one of the people who who aims to um, uh, be uh, receiving this healing energy tonight. Um, while while we're leading the the first phase, the guided imagery, and while people are practicing for you in that way, then the thing is to be receptive to re to receiving that energy. And and what I would encourage you both as givers and receivers in this exercise is, is to aim to take it from 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 beyond being an abstract thing where, where it's just visual. Because the, the guided imagery is a visual, it, it's a visually based exercise where you imagine white light, you imagine generating it, you imagine it filling your own body, you imagine transmitting it to the other person. And if you're on the receiving end, you imagine receiving that white light coming in and bringing healing to you. So rather than just leave it on the visual level, just as like you're, you're watching a film, you, you, you aim to actually generate as much feeling that can go with it as you can. And I would suggest you, if it really touches you, then there's quite a possibility you could bring a tear to your eye. And if that were to happen, that would be like a good, good sign. <laughs> Uh, if, if you feel moved by the exercise, then then you're probably in the right territory. Uh, and then and then as as the guided imagery part of the exercise comes to an end, then the aim for both the givers and the receivers is just to be open to going into to letting go of the sense of having to do anything after that point. And just being open to enter into that deeper stillness of meditation and holding that for the rest of the exercise. All right, so it's, I've given quite a long um, introduction this evening, but I, I, I was uh, I've done that intentionally, and I, I was keen to uh, record it so that if you want to come back to this and listen to it again, you can, and also we can share it with other people, um, and. So it means that we might go over a little uh, this evening. Um, I think probably uh, we'll, we'll probably spend about 20 minutes on the exercise itself. Uh, so just be uh, conscious of that. And this is certainly an exercise if you're on uh, the receiving end, um, you can do lying down. Uh, you can certainly do it sitting up, but if you want to um, change your posture, this would be a good time to to get into the posture that you want to be in for the exercise. Um, remember that with an exercise like this, it's um, preferable to stay awake. Um, but if you do go to sleep, it can actually be very uh, deep and uh, satisfying um, sort of sleep that you go into. Um, and again, I think with uh, tonight, a bit like we do when we do the sleep meditations, uh, as they cycle around on on these Mondays, uh, we might we might just sort of trail off uh, rather than draw the um, um, the session to a to a definitive close. Uh, so um, so we might might just wait for a couple of minutes. Um, let's think. I think probably if we leave it open for five minutes after I stop talking, and it'll be pretty obvious when I do. Um, then we can just we can just leave the um, the Zoom session open for about another five minutes, so that people can be in that atmosphere. Um, and then if you, if if you feel like you're in a really good place, folks, I just encourage you to stay there for as long as you feel comfortable. Uh, and if you do happen to rock off to sleep, that that would be um, fine. Okay. So if you need to adjust your, your body, just get your body settled. Just settle into your posture. Mm. 
And just take a few moments to get your body settled. And then have that sense of relaxing into your posture. And if you were doing this exercise for yourself, you can spend a longer time on formally relaxing your body. But with this session, just do that conscious physical relaxation for yourself in whatever way works best for you. So maybe it's that sense of just remembering that feeling of the body being relaxed and going back to that feeling. And just being reminded with exercises like this that the feeling, getting into the feeling of it, really helps to deepen the experience and the benefit. So even if your body's uncomfortable, or even if it's painful, do what you can just to allow yourself to feel your body as it is. And this is where mindfulness is really helpful. We aim to just actually be curious to notice how the body is at the moment. So it's almost like taking a personal inventory. And at the same time, we can overlay that with the conscious intention just to relax a little more. So you might have your own formal ways of doing that, or it might be just as simple as a deeper breath or two. Sometimes just moving parts of your body that are a little uncomfortable, just moving them a little and feeling your breath going into those areas can help just to relax and release, allow your body to settle. And one of the other things that can be helpful is once you've relaxed your body a little, then for this particular exercise, it's useful not to dwell on it all that much, but you know, just to accept your body as it is. And in all reality, that's all we can do. Here we are at this particular point in time and you're in the particular place you are when your body feels the way that it does. So in that spirit of mindfulness, it's more about accepting how it is. It may well be different tomorrow or next week, but at the moment, this is it. So we aim just to acknowledge that. And for some of you, you'll have that overriding sense that healing's something that you're yearning for. And you can be aware of that as well. And be open to it. It's almost like relaxing into it. And for those of you who are intending to be givers this evening, just imagine now as if it's in the sky above you, the highest form of power that you know, what symbolizes for you, the divine, or unconditional love, universal energy, So as you do that, it may take on a specific form like Christ or Mother Mary or a figure from a different tradition. Or it may be more abstract. And even if you have a 
traditional connection, a spiritual religious connection, imagining this source of healing energy of unconditional love as being like a ball of light, like the sun, can work well. And just take a few moments to consciously consider that what we're talking about here is something that is quite universal. So if you are imagining as if there's a higher being, imagine them as if they're in the sky above you like you could the sun. And again, rather than just seeing them visually, go into the feeling presence of it. So it's a bit like, can you imagine what it would be like if Christ or Buddha, a figure from another tradition that you're relating to, actually came into the room and joined you at this particular moment? What would that feel like? Now, if you were in the presence of unconditional love, what would that feel like? And as you hold in your mind this figure or the ball of light, as if it's in the sky above you, imagine now that that white light energy starts to become stronger and radiate down towards you. Almost like being under a searchlight or probably more a bit like a waterfall or a shower because as well as being able to see it visually, you want to actually feel it tangibly. And it's luminous. So it could almost be like a vapour, a fine mist, light rain. And as you breathe in, imagine you're breathing that warm liquid white light in, like a vapour, and it comes into your own heart warms your heart, fills it with that sense of loving kindness. So each time you're breathing in, you're drawing in more of that white light, both seeing and feeling it flowing down into your heart, filling your heart, so that your heart becomes white, quite radiant. And as you continue to breathe in, that sense of white light being radiant within your heart starts to expand so that it glows, expands, flows out all through your chest both sides of your lungs, all through your chest. And then you can start to direct this white light with your breath. So as you breathe in, you draw in more of this white light, feel it filling your heart and your chest. And then as you breathe out, just gently feel it flowing down with the out breath, down through your torso, down through your abdomen, tummy, lower back, down around the hips, the pelvis, through the genital area and down through your legs. Almost like your body's like a, an empty vase in the shape of your human body. And as you're breathing in more of this white light, 
each time you breathe in, you're breathing in more of this white light coming from that universal, unlimited, infinite source of loving kindness. And as you breathe out, it just gently flows down into your body, filling it, filling it with this radiant white light. So in the process for yourself, it's washing away, transforming anything that's old or worn, unwanted. So having quite a complete healing effect through your own body. And as you continue to breathe in and breathe out, as you breathe out now, imagine this white light flowing down through your arms down through your upper arms, your elbows. Breathing in, breathing out, with the out breath going down through the forearms, wrists, hands, fingers. Again, feeling your arms and your fingers, just like they're an empty vessel that's being filled with this warm liquid white light. Bring a new energy, vitality. And as you continue to breathe in and out, now as you breathe out, following the light as it goes up through your neck, lower parts of your face, the jaw, mouth, tongue. Up across the cheeks, nose, ears, through your brain through the back of the head, the top of the head, so that your whole body is radiant, filled with this white light. It's like this vessel, this vase that's your body, is actually filled with this radiant white light. Now imagine as if they too are in front of you, somebody that you know, who's in need of healing. Take a moment just to consider what their situation is. Just briefly, acknowledging their need for healing and your own intention to be helpful. And then as if they're sitting there, standing in front of you, however you imagine them, as you breathe out now from your own heart, imagine the white light flowing with the out breath to the heart of this person that you're imagining in front of you, this person that you know is in need of healing. And as the white light touches their heart, imagine they too are feeling the actual presence of unconditional love in their heart. And as you continue to breathe in and out, you breathe, breathe in more white light. Have the sense of your own body being filled with white light and as you breathe out, it's like the light flows through you. So it's not like you're generating this light, it's like you're actually drawing it down from that infinite source, having it fill your own body and then flow through you to this other person. And then consider the other people that are joining us in this session this evening. And imagine as if they're in front of you. And again, as you breathe in more of this white light, imagine it filling your own body, your body being filled with that white light. And then from your own heart, this white light flowing out in multiple directions to each of these people. Imagine them feeling 
the healing energy of that unconditional love coming into their own hearts, their own bodies. Imagine the white light flowing out and filling their own body, like, again, like an empty vase or vessel being filled. So flowing down through their body first, being contained within the feet, the legs, up through their body, down through their arms, up into their head, filling them completely. Breathing in, drawing in, in more of that white light, breathing out, radiating this healing energy. <clears throat> flowing out to all these people. If you feel to, you could imagine other people in other places in need of healing. People who are going through difficult times. People who are going through different difficult health conditions. in a very broad and generic way. Imagine that as you're breathing in, you're drawing in more of this radiant white light. And as you breathe out, it's flowing out right around the planet, touching everybody who's in need. And just be reassured again that what you're drawing on is something that's like an infinite resource. It's not like a limited one. It's not like there's enough for two or three people or 10 or 20 people or a couple of hundred people. You're drawing on an infinite resource. And if you think of all the other people who do these sorts of practices, It's like you can be aware, you can be conscious of being part of a really strong human wish for others to be well and to be happy. So while you're doing this practice quite mindfully, you're part of the fact that Many people in many places around the world do this as a daily sort of practice. I wish that other people be well and happy. And as you feel that all-encompassing sense of drawing on this infinite energy and radiating it out quite widely, just actually let go of the practice itself and rest in the feeling of it. like let go of the sense of needing to do anything. And just relax into this atmosphere that we've cre created collectively. Nothing to do. Nowhere else to be. No one else to please or satisfy. It's just a moment where we can 
let go. Relax deeply. And be still for a few moments, just resting in that presence. Just simply letting go. Letting go. Letting go. 